on behalf of the Northeastern Hill University, Tura Campus, and the PA Sangma Foundation, I welcome you to the fourth PA Sangma Memorial Lecture by Professor David Semley. The Memorial Lecture commemorates the birth anniversary of the legendary and iconic parliamentarian, Sri P.A. Sangma, a man of letters and versatile genius whose charismatic personality made him a much-loved Lok Sabha speaker. His political career, spanning over four decades, saw him tirelessly working for the upliftment of the minorities. As cabinet minister, chief minister, and speaker of the Lok Sabha, he was a much-loved and popular leader of the masses and a statesman of repute at the national level. His many accolades include the Padma Vibhushan, which was given posthumously to commemorate his outstanding lifelong achievements. He was truly a beloved son of the soil who mesmerized the whole of India with his political acumen. Now I invite Professor S. K. Sivastava, Vice Chancellor Nehu, to give a welcome address. Namaskar, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, Honorable Sri James Sangmaji, Honorable Minister of Food and Civil Supplies and Consumer Affairs, Law and Power. Honorable Srimati Agatha Sangmaji, Honorable Member of the Parliament, Lok Sabha. Respected Professor David Shimle, the former Chairman of the UPSC and the former Vice Chancellor of Rajiv Gandhi University. Most respected Srimati Suridni Sangmaji, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great day, great occasion for all of us. Uh, we are here uh, to remember Sri P.A. Sangmaji, a dynamic, visionary, energetic leader from the state of Meghalaya who contributed greatly to the development of Meghalaya, the Northeast region, and also served very well in the Union Cabinet, uh, having contributed greatly to the national development. Well, today, being the 1st September, as we all know, is the occasion for 4th PA Sangma Memorial Lecture. In the year 2017, Nehu uh, decided, being in, having been inspired by the thought and philosophy and action, you know, his contributions to the society, to the Northeast region, and to the country as a whole, uh, to remember our great leader uh, Sangmaji on this uh, great occasion. And that's how, uh, with the joint uh, efforts of uh, PA Sangma Foundation and Nehu, uh, we have made this, uh, uh, and this event has become uh, possible. Uh, Nehu and uh, PA Sangma uh, Foundation uh, will uh, continue uh, to uh, commemorate this day every uh, 1st September every year, now on. And uh, on this day, uh, we, having, uh, we, we remember uh, the contributions of uh, uh, Sri P.A. Sangmaji, who lives very much in our heart. Every year we have had distinguished speakers, including a Nobel laureate speaking, uh, giving their uh, you know, keynote addresses on this occasion. And today it's a matter of uh, pleasure and privilege uh, to have uh, Professor uh, David Shamle, one of the eminent academicians of the country, with us. Thank you, sir. And uh, lastly, once again, uh, I uh, welcome you all and uh, extend my best uh, wishes uh, uh, to the people of uh, Meghalaya, especially Tura region, those who are here. Despite the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, situation, uh, our spirits have not dwindled. Our spirit is very high and we are still you know, remembering together our Sri uh, P.A. Sangmaji. Uh, once again, I thank you all for uh, making it convenient to attend this uh, great uh, function. Uh, I wish all the very best uh, to Nehu and PSN Foundation. Mithela Khublai, 
थैंक यू वेरी मच जय हिंद On the occasion of the fourth PA Sangma Memorial Lecture, floral tributes were offered by Madam Suradini K Sangma, Chairperson of the PA Sangma Foundation. They were also offered by the Honourable Member of Parliament, Madam Agatha K Sangma, and by Dr. Patrick Marak. Floral tributes were offered by the Pro Vice Chancellor of Nehru, Thura Campus. Professor J Singhaya likewise by the deputy commissioner Shri Ram Singh floral tributes were offered by the working president Shri S P Sangma and by Shri Danny C H Marak Professor Famelin K Marak of the Northeastern Hill University Thura campus also offered floral tributes. Today the 1st of September is my late father Mr P A Sangma's birthday and on this day we often celebrate his life in different ways our party has functions we have uh, different uh, you know our P A Sangma foundation has different programs just like that even the Nehu Thura has been celebrating his life through a guest lecture that happens every year on his birthday and uh, this year we are very privileged on the 4th pa sangma memorial lecture to have professor david samle to be giving his speech his uh, you know his talk and uh, i'm really looking forward to it i know that he will really do justice to this memorial lecture because even in the past we've had wonderful speakers to contribute to this occasion we have uh, renowned people like Uh, Mr. Kailash Satyarthi, we have uh, Mr. D. D. Lapang, and a dear friend of mine, Mr. P. D. Rai, who have spoken on this occasion. So I just want to thank Nehu for organizing this every year and putting in so much effort to make this a memorable event. And I would like to thank, especially on behalf of my family, Mr. David uh, Samle, who is a very well-known academician. I would like to thank Professor for. this wonderful contribution that he is going to be giving us today thank you very much now i have a pleasure to invite one of the sons of uh, late pa sangma sri james pang sangke sangma who is an honorable cabinet minister food civil supplies and consumer affairs department information and public relations department law department power department and taxation government of meghalaya to deliver a speech dear friends thank you so much for joining us uh, for this program and uh, at the very outset uh, i would like to say that uh, i'm so happy to be part of uh, this pa sangma memorial lecture which is being organized by the northeastern hill university along with the pa sangma foundation and um, i'm so happy that we are being able to organize this uh, especially this year with the kind of uh, challenges and the difficulties that all of us are facing for one i had felt that it would have been very difficult to organize this but a very big thank you to the uh, northeastern hill university and also the pa sangma foundation for having come up with this idea to uh, organize this program Uh, and make it into a web content and share with all of you so uh, thank you so much once uh, you know at the beginning itself to nehu and to the pa sangma foundation we've all heard the saying that uh, the darkest night uh, it produces the brightest stars and uh, 
I think that uh, that really holds true today because um, if you look at knowledge, knowledge is the brightest star that uh, burns the brightest or shines the brightest in the contrasting darkness that surrounds it. And this is the light which will drive away uh, fear that stems from ignorance. Uh, this is a light that we must all share with everybody generously. And um, this is something that uh, my late father, Mr. P.S. Sangma, he firmly believed in. And um, today, I think um, this P.S. Sangma Memorial Lecture is one of the fittest uh, ways to remember him, uh, to honor him, uh, and to honor his life and his core beliefs. Today, it's, it's really nice to be here with all of you to be part of this uh, program. You know, we will have a very, very renowned person to share his knowledge and experience with us. And um, we've had uh, many such memorial lectures where we've had intellectual luminaries who have come and shared their rich experience and knowledge with all of us. And today also, uh, we have Professor David Seemley, who does not need any introduction. Uh, he is joining us for this memorial lecture and um, I really want to thank him from the bottom of my heart because he has taken uh, his time to uh, really share his knowledge, his experiences in this memorial lecture. And um, I know that um, during this particular challenging times, uh, it is very difficult for all of us, but despite the kind of difficulties that he may have been facing, he was so kind enough to uh, come and accept the invitation to address and give the keynote address for this uh, memorial lecture. So uh, really, a big, big thank you uh, from uh, my side on behalf of the P.A. Sangma Foundation. Uh, thank you so much, Professor David Simle. I think that uh, today um, this memorial lecture is such an important reminder uh, of the life of uh, late P.A. Sangma, who um, brought uh, recognition, who brought so much pride to each and every one of us. And uh, the fact that he came from such a humble background. He was born in this small, dusty uh, village in a really uh, far-flung uh, area uh, on the border of Bangladesh. It's, it's such an inspiration for all of us that uh, a person uh, who came from such a humble background could uh, achieve so much in his lifetime. And uh, this really goes to show that um, hard work, uh, sincerity, dedication, if you were to put in all these efforts, uh, I think there are no limits whatsoever uh, towards what one can achieve. This really inspires, I believe, not just me, not just my brother and my sisters, but countless others who have known him, uh, countless others who have come across him and uh, who have interacted with him. And uh, this today is really so important uh, that we all recall, we remember uh, the kind of contributions uh, through this memorial lecture. We are all reminded of his life, of the kind of work that he did, of the kind of love and the devotion and the dedication that he had towards uh, towards the people of not just the state but the entire country. And uh, I think that um, today uh, this memorial lecture is um, very important, uh, not just because of the kind of knowledge that we will all be gaining from uh, what we will come to hear uh, in Professor David Simley's uh, lecture, but also from the fact that uh, remember Mr. P.S. Angma and the life and the simplicity and the dedication that he lived with. So, uh, dear friends, um, I want to really express my deepest gratitude to Professor David Simley. Um, so it was so kind of you, Professor, for having um, agreed and uh, accepted our invitation. And uh, really a very big thank you to you. A very big thank you to Nehu, who uh, is the brains and uh, you know, the force behind organizing this memorial lecture. Thank you so much 
to all the uh, professors, uh, to, um, to Professor Srivastava, to all the faculty members in Nehu, and um, also to the PA Sangma Foundation uh, that has collaborated with Nehu for this program. Uh, once again, uh, you know, I really look forward to listening to what uh, Professor David Simley is going to speak about. And I'm very sure that all of you who are listening in uh, will go back enriched with the kind of knowledge that Professor David Simley will be sharing because of uh, the kind of uh, huge experience that he has, uh, the kind of uh, different, different uh, responsibilities that he has taken up in his life. I think uh, that because of that richness in the kind of experiences and the knowledge that he has, all of us are going to gain a lot from this. And this is really what the P.A. Sangma Memorial Lecture really stands for, that all of us uh, go back enriched with knowledge, enriched with that light, enriched with the light that will help us in dispel all the darkness that is around us, uh, the darkness which comes from COVID uh, that has affected all of us. And this darkness is there. It feels like it's um, enveloping all of us slowly and slowly. But this light of knowledge is, I believe, very, very strongly. It will help us in dispelling this darkness and uh, really look forward to it. Thank you once again. Um, God bless each and every one of you. Jai Hind. Today we are very fortunate and honored to have uh, Professor David Reed Simley, a renowned academician, who will be delivering the fourth um, uh, P.A. Sangma Memorial Talk. Uh, Sir Professor David Simley is the former chairman, UPSC, Commission of India, and former vice chancellor, Rajiv Gandhi University, Itanaga, in October 2011. Before joining Rajiv Gandhi University, Itanaga, uh, as Vice Chancellor, Professor David Simley served Nehu from 1979 to 2012 as head, Department of History, Controller of Examinations, and officiated as Registrar and um, Pro Vice Chancellor Nehu. Even after retirement, uh, Sir David Simley is still active in delivering lectures, mentoring scholars, and conducting research. Today also, he's, he will be delivering lecture on political activity and the Hill State Movement for Meghalaya. I invite Sir David Simley to give a talk. It gives me great pleasure to deliver this fourth PA Sangma Memorial Lecture, instituted by the Northeastern Hill University, Tura Campus, in collaboration with the PA Sangma Foundation. This is a befitting gesture in memory of PA Sangma, who among many of his achievements was instrumental in providing the idea and facility for a university campus at Tura. Former Chief Minister of Meghalaya and Central Minister and Lok Sabha Speaker, the late Purno A. Sangma was deservedly conferred the Padma Vibhushan in his second highest civilian honor posthumously in 2017. In his career spanning many decades, he was a lecturer, a lawyer, and a journalist before he was called to state and national politics. Chief Minister of Meghalaya from 1988 to 1990, Sangma rose to become the country's Lok Sabha speaker, serving from 1996 to 1998, when the country witnessed three coalition governments. He admirably conducted parliamentary proceedings using his infectious smile, coupled with his fine sense of humor, to diffuse tensions. His sagacity in conducting the proceedings of the 11th Lok Sabha is recorded in the Annals of Parliament. Sangma died in New Delhi on 4th March 2017. Today, on his birth anniversary, we celebrate the life of this fine human being, leader and gentleman of a politician. I recall the expectations of many when Purno A. Sangma was appointed and took over as Chief Minister of Meghalaya in 1988. Though the tenure was but for three years, he left his mark as an able administrator and politician. His legacy in politics are his ideals and principles, the party he formed, the 
that grew under his able mentorship and currently under the energetic, his energetic son, Sri Conrad Sangma. I recall too one of many meetings held with him in New Delhi, where he presented me a copy of his book, P.A. Sangma, A Life in Politics, Selected Speeches and Lectures. It is wonderfully illustrated on the cover with three images of P.A. Sangma, the contemplative, the smiling, and the attentive. The book provides selection of several of the more important, important speeches he delivered in Parliament. I trust the book will be followed with a more detailed biography of the man. I was looking forward to addressing the audience at Tura. That not being so, I thank the P.A. Sangma family for making this arrangement to have the recording done at my home. I have decided to speak on the making of Meghalaya. The political maneuverings in its making were long and arduous, and yet accomplished with dignity, and the end achieved through constitutional means. It would be refreshing to recall the past, as Meghalaya will be observing its 50th foundation in January 2022. Political activity. Mention should be made of the freedom struggle and the role of our freedom fighters in the making of Meghalaya and its history. But we cannot go into that development too long. I will start with the 20th century, where Sonaram Sangma led a group of Garos, a very long agitation covering many years, in a claim for Bijni and Habraghat estates. The movement extended into demand the res restoration of reserved forests and the abolition of forced labor. There was a long drawn disturbance in December 2002. An inquiry was instituted in 2008, which submitted its report. Sonaram Sangma was unhappy with that uh, settlement and he continued the agitation for several years. This was followed by political activity in the Khasi and the Jayanti Hills, particularly in the Khasi Hills, where these aims were looking for a recognition of their status as Indian rulers. Between 2000, 1921, 1928 and 29, as also in 1932, many of these aims petitioned government for a recognition of their status. This was followed by the more hectic political activity in the Khasi, uh, Khasi Hills with the establishment of the Khasi National Darbar, 1923. In line with a discovery from, of the Calcutta High Court in 1884 that the Khasi chiefs were ruling chiefs. This was followed by the integration story of the Khasi chiefs and their states into the Indian Union. This was shortly before the independence of India and the requirements given by the government of India that the Khasi chiefs signed the instrument of accession, which they did in July 1947. This was followed then in December 1947 by the Khasi chiefs being called to Raj Bhavan to sign the instrument of accession. 20 chiefs signed, five chiefs signed in the following year. Whereas, whereas the Khasi chiefs had signed the instrument of accession, there was no merger. Because the Khasi chiefs had informed that a constitutional body of all the Khasi states was required for an agreement and an understanding on the merger issue. For which a Darbar was inaugurated in April 1949. This was then followed with the integration of the Khasi states by constitutional means through the Constituent Assembly of India, through its discussions through 1946 into 1949, the Constituent Assembly framed the Constitution of India in which it was eventually found that the Khasi states had a place. I will now move to the Hill State Movement. The close of colonial rule and the ushering of freedom and self-governance 
brought in many more changes for the tribes and communities of what was to become Meghalaya. While the connection with Assam and its people has been long and profound, the tribal people in time asserted their right to govern themselves at higher levels of governance. Scarcely had the British left when Assam's representatives in the Constituent Assembly advanced assimilationist views. Strong protests were raised by them in the Constituent Assembly when the sixth schedule was taken up for discussion. We want to assimilate the tribal people, said a member of the Constituent Assembly. We were never given that opportunity so far, he went on to say. The Hill people did not want to be assimilated in this manner. It would not be long before the cordial relations between the Assamese and the Hill people would be tested. The genesis of a separate Hill state for the tribal communities in Northeast India was a rally of students and youth in Shillong held in June 1952, led by Hoover Hinyota. Agitating against the principle of nomination in the composition of the newly constituted district council. The issue subsequently broadened to include a memorandum submitted by the Khasi National Darbar by its president, Babu Wilson Reid, to Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru on 19th October. Among several issues the memorandum brought to the notice of the Prime Minister, their objection to a proposal of making Assamese the state language of Assam and the desire for unification of the hills in the region under one administration. This was the impetus for a meeting in Shillong in June 1954, convened by Captain Williamson A. Sangma, Chief Executive Member of the Garu Hills District Council. The CEMs of the District Councils discussed things of mutual interest, but largely the formation of a separate hill state and the amendment to the sixth schedule. Prime Minister Nehru, who received the report of the meeting, was supportive for greater autonomy for the hill districts within Assam, and that they should be allowed to feel that they are looked after themselves. The Chief Minister of Assam, Bishnu Ram Medhi, believed the time was not opportune to think in terms of greater autonomy for the district council. Soon after this, Captain Sangma convened a meeting of the Assam Hill Tribal Leaders Conference in Tura in October 1954. Largely attended by persons again connected with the district councils, the Tura Conference resolved to submit a memorandum to the state's reorganization committee, demanding a hill state to be known as the Eastern Hills State, to comprise of six ADCs and the tribal areas of Nifa. It was also de decided to form a Hill Tribal Union with an ad hoc committee with Captain Sangma as chairman and B.B. Lingdo as secretary. The committee included as members A.S. Kongpai, Babu Wilson Reed, J. Hagjer, B.M. Pew, and B.M. Roy. The state's reorganization committee was not in favor of a Hill state. Rather, it recommended that special attention be paid to the development of the Assam Hill Districts. A third meeting of the Hill Districts leaders was held in Aizol, 26 to 28th October 1955. It is interesting that many of these meetings were held in different parts of the Hill area of Northeast India. The meeting expressed its concern at the state's reorganization committee's inability to appreciate the aspirations of the tribal people and reiterated its demand for bringing the hills of Northeast India under one administration. It was here that the Eastern India Tribal Union was, was formally put in place at this meeting, and I'll be referring to this as the EITU. 1957 was a year of hectic political activity with elections in the Lok Sabha, and the EITU spearheading a movement for the creation of a new state. More than a response to the creation of the state of Nagaland, it was the decision of the Assam government to introduce a bill in its legislative assembly for Assamese as the official language of Assam. And this renewed the demand for a hill state. Chief Minister Chaliha 
first announced this intent in March 1960. A second announcement was made in June that year. The statement was not received with enthusiasm other than in the Brahmaputra Valley. It was not welcomed in the hill districts and in Kachar. Captain Sangma again called the hill leaders, irrespective of party affiliation, to meet in Shillong 6th, 7th July 1960. And this was to discuss the situation arising out of the impending legislation. The meeting was historic for the resolution to establish the All-Party Hill Leaders Conference, the APHLC. The meeting further expressed its strong opposition to the move to declare Assamese as the official language of the state and urged the government of Assam to consider dropping the proposed bill. The APHLC held its second conference in Shillong, 22nd, 23rd, August 1960. A resolution was adopted that the Hill people would have no alternative but to demand a separation from Assam should the controversial bill be passed. And the bill was passed. It was first introduced in the Assam Legislative Assembly, 10th October 1960. It was opposed by tribal members of the cabinet who resigned in protest. On 24th October, the APHLC staged a hartal with massive demonstrations in Shillong. That night, the Assam Legislative Assembly held a special session and adopted the language bill. This was very naturally followed by the APHLC's third meeting held on 16th to 18th November at Haflong. The meeting was chaired by Member of Parliament J.B. Hagjer, and it resolved that the passage of the bill was clear proof of the Assamese community to avail themselves of undue advantage to enhance their domination of the hill people. The meeting drafted a constitution for the proposed state and decided to send a delegation to meet the Prime Minister. Another 10 years. An APHLC delegation met the Prime Minister on 25th November 1960. The language issue was raised. An assurance was given to the party representatives that Assamese would not be imposed on the tribals. At a second meeting, two days later, the delegation was informed that the only satisfactory solution to the matter was to provide the hill areas full autonomy. And for this, Jawaharlal Nehru suggested the implementation of a Scottish pattern plan. The Council of Action of the APHLC discussed the offer and found the Scottish plan impracticable. Reiterating again its demand for a hill state, the Congress party supported the plan. It resulted in a split in the party. The 1962 election was fought on the issue of the Scottish plan uh, as against the implementation of the hill state. With the election of a fairly large number of legislators to the assembly, the APHLC pressed further its demand on the verdict of the elections. Its rigid demands, however, dampened the intentions of the prime minister in his meetings with Gigi Swell, their member of parliament. What next ensued was the appointment of the Pataskar Commission on the hill areas of Assam. Appointed in March 1965, the commission failed to consider the assurance given by Pandit Nehru that the hill areas should be given greater autonomy. It proposed no basic change in the sixth schedule. Consequently, the APHLC rejected the recommendation of the commission and announced its decision to resort to direct action with a boycott of the elections in 1967. The pace of developments for a hill state quickened with Indira Gandhi's assumption of the office of prime minister. She came to Shillong several times, and here we have recorded her coming on 27th December 1966. What followed was discussions between the Assam chief minister Chaliha and the APHLC in early January the following year. Nothing came much out of this meeting. But what did come was the announcement made in Parliament by the President, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, in his address in Parliament on 18th March 1967. In line with this assurance, government appointed Ashoka Mehta, a cabinet minister, to head a commission composed of representatives of political parties of Assam. The APHLC found the recommendation of the commission to give maximum autonomy to each tribal area on the ground that each area being different from the other in many aspects of life divisive. 
The party rejected the plan and called for a non-violent agitation on 10th September 1968. The state of Meghalaya. The first decisive step towards a hill state came on 11th September 1968 with the announcement by the centre of the reorganisation of Assam. It provided for an autonomous state for the Garo, Khasi and Jyanti hills with an option for the Garo for the Mikir Hills and the North Kachar Hills to join the state on the basis of a resolution adopted by a majority of not less than two thirds of the members of the district council. The announcement provided for a legislative assembly and a council of ministers with provision for taxation under a number of subjects assigned to the state, a high court, a public service commission and other common facilities. The question was then asked, by many in the state and particularly the leaders, what should be the name of the state? And for this, our leaders had to go back to a PhD submitted in the University of uh, Paris in the 1930s. The thesis was written by uh, the geographer S.P. Chatterjee, who conducted a study in these hills in the 1920s. He called these hills Megalaya, and it is after, interestingly, that PhD dissertation that we are all Meghalayans and the state is Meghalaya. Meghalaya was made an autonomous state in an experiment that has not been replicated in the country after a relatively long and peaceful movement and, and campaigning for a hill state. The Assam Reorganization Bill was introduced in Parliament on 15 December 1969 and passed by both Houses of Parliament on Christmas Eve, 24th December 1969. The state was inaugurated by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi at the garrison grounds Shillong on 2nd April 1970. The first ministry included Captain Williamson Sangma as Chief Minister and Stanley Nichols Roy, Edwin Barre, Stanford Marak and Bibi Lingdo as ministers. However, difficulties arose in the working of the autonomy in functioning of the new state with regard to the quantum of legislative powers and the functioning of the judiciary, appointments and police. Casey Punt, the Union Minister of State for Home, when on a visit to Shillong on 14th September 1970, was requested by the APHLC to make Megala a full-fledged state. The party went further on its at its 22nd session on 19 September to request the government of India to declare the autonomous state as a full state. It was appropriate that this issue be discussed in the legislative assembly. By a unanimous vote taken on 30th September 1970, the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly passed a resolution urging the government of India to bring in place a full-fledged state of Meghalaya. This was followed by meetings on 2nd September, October and 20th October 1970 of the Meghalaya Cabinet with the Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. She was extremely considerate to the call of the Hill people. And she informed Parliament on, that on 10th November 1970 that Government of India had decided to accept in principle the request of the Hill State. The Hill State was created through the Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act 1971, enacted by Parliament on 30th December 1971, provided in its comprehensive legislation for the establishment of the state of Manipur and Tripura and formation of the state of Meghalaya and of the Union Territories of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi inaugurated the state of Meghalaya on 21st January 1972 at the Polo Ground, Shillong, amidst a large gathering of people of the new state. This happy occasion was the culmination of a people's hill state movement and the commencement of another chapter in the history of the state. My conclusion, as Meghalaya prepares to celebrate its 50th foundation, we recall the role of her leaders and many who participated in the hill state movement. They came from a cross section of society, including the young and the elderly, with no hill state, no rest as they refrain. With songs and banners, they held forth 
in support of what they believed was their right. The role of the general populace in this movement in what culminated with statehood requires to be recalled. Memory is short. There are many who participated, can be interviewed and records taken of their participation in the movement. A gallery of the statehood movement could be a befitting memorial to this significant chapter of history. Kublai. Now I invite Professor Ji Singhaya, Pro Vice Chancellor, Nehu Tura Campus, to propose a board of things. Professor David Shimleji, who is the former chairperson, UPSC, and former Vice Chancellor, Rajiv Gandhi University, Itanagar, and a great historian of our country, uh, Srimati Agatha K. Sangmaji, who is uh, Honorable Member of Parliament, Lok Sabha Thura, Sri James P. K. Sangmaji, who is Honorable Cabinet Minister for Food Supplies and uh, Consumer Affairs, uh, Srimati uh, Sarodini K. Sangmaji, wife of our great leader, P. A. Sangmaji, and uh, Chairperson, P. A. Sangma Foundation, uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir, uh, Professor S.K. Srivastavaji, and uh, our District Administration, D.C. Ram Singh Ji, other officials and members of civil society, uh, members of Doordarshan, All India Radio, and members of uh, Nehu Fraternity. So with this, uh, I sincerely thank each and every one of you who have involved and participated in this fourth memorial lecture today. Uh, I thank one and all, ladies and uh, Mithela, thank you, Namaskar, Jai Hind.